Hi, my name is Andrew Waldo and this is Colton Lipko. We're with the Alaska Department of Fishing Game. Today we're going to tell you about beach fishing for halibut on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula. So Pacific halibut are the largest flatfish that are commonly targeted by sport anglers. They can reach up to 8 feet long and over 500 pounds. Halibut and other flatfishes are flattened laterally and swim sideways with one side facing down and the other side facing up. The upper side is typically gray to brown or nearly black with modeling in numerous spots to blend in with a sandy and muddy bottom. The underside is typically white. Virtually all halibut are right eyed, meaning both eyes are found on the upper dark side of the body. Left eyed halibut are rare. One report suggests a ratio of about 1 in 20,000. In these fish, the eyes and dark pigment are on the left side of the body, and the fish swims with the right, white side facing down. The dorsal fin is continuous from near the eyes to the base of the tail, and the anal fin extends from just behind the anus to the same point on the other side. The mouth extends to the middle of the lower eye or beyond, and is nearly symmetrical. The scales are quite small and buried in the skin, making the skin appear smooth. The tail is broad, symmetrical, and lacks a distinct fork. The lateral line is strongly arched over the pectoral fin. These characteristics will help you tell halibut apart from any other flatfish you may catch while beach fishing. This map shows the Pacific halibut range in Alaska. The halibut are found on or near the continental shelf through much of the northern Pacific Ocean from California northward to the Chukchi Sea and from Russia southward to Hokkaido, Japan. Halibut are demersal fish that are typically found near the bottom but sometimes swim up into the water column to feed or for seasonal migrations. They primarily live along the continental shelf but do utilize shallow water at different life stages and seasons. Halibut prefer water temperatures of 37 to 47 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we'll briefly touch on the life history of halibut. They spawn in deep water in the winter, generally December or January. They have anywhere between 500,000 and 4 million eggs per female and the eggs will hatch about 15 to 20 days after spawning. They will then enter the larva life stage and then the post larva life stage. These stages are free floating with the currents and the young are feeding off the yolk sac in which they have carried from the egg and then once that is depleted they will then begin feeding on plankton. Young halibut which is around six months or so will then migrate into shallow waters and they'll be feeding on fish and various shellfish. At around 8 to 12 years halibut are then mature. It's around eight years for males and around 12 years for females. Overall, a halibut can live up to 40 years and reach a very large size. We will now talk about, in a little more detail, what do halibut eat? So at that less than a year phase, they're largely eating plankton. And then from one to three years, they will eat small shrimp-like crustaceans or zooplankton or krill. At three plus years they pretty much moved into feeding on fish, uh, herring, lance, capelin, smelt, pollock, sablefish, cod, and rockfish, octopus, crabs, and clams, and kind of whatever else may actually end up down the bottom in front of their mouths. So now we're going to talk about some other flatfish that may be commonly caught while you're fishing from halibut from the beach. There are many species that you may encounter, but one of the more common ones that people will confuse with halibut is the arrowtooth flounder. Unlike halibut, arrowtooth flounder have coarse scales and prominent needle-like teeth. The lateral line of an arrowtooth flounder is barely curved over the pectoral fin. When cooked, arrowtooth flounder is arrowtooth flounder flesh is known to be mushy and are generally not considered table fare. 
Another species frequently encountered is the starry flounder. This species belongs to the right-eyed flounder family, but can also be left-eyed. It has an oval body shape and a slender pointed head. The eyed side is olive to dark brown or almost black, and the blind side is white to creamy white. Unpaired fins are white to yellow to orange with a distinct black bars. This species has a caudal fin that is nearly square or slightly rounded. Starry flounder have a lateral line with a slight curve over the pectoral fin. And they have a small mouth and a maxillary that extends below the anterior part of the lower eye. The anal spine is strong. The, this flounder ha has scattered rough tubercles or star-like scales on both the eyed and blind sides. Now we're going to talk about preparing to go halibut fishing on the beach or surf fishing. First, we're going to talk about current sport fishing licenses, regulations, locations to try fishing. We're going to go through an equipment list, when to go, and tides to try fishing. Halibut are managed by the International Pacific Halibut Commission. The International Pacific Halibut Commission uses the latest scientific information on abundance and potential yield of the Pacific halibut stock to establish catch limits annually for fisheries in U.S. and Canadian waters. They do this by setting the catch limits at a level that will ensure long-term welfare of the Pacific halibut stock and sets the dates for fishing seasons which usually spans from March to November and is closed the rest of the year when the Pacific halibut spawn. They have additionally established a minimum size requirement to project, protect juvenile halibut in the commercial fisheries. Here are the current federal halibut regulations. Make sure you double check these regulations and the state of Alaska regulations before heading out fishing. When you purchase your 2021 fishing license, remember to pick up a copy of the 2021 Sport Fishing Regulations and check for any emergency orders that may be in place. Let's run through the regulations for unguided sport fishermen. The season for halibut is February 1st to December 31st. Unguided anglers are allowed to keep two halibut per day of any size and have four in possession. Snagging is closed year-round in Cook Inlet, north of the line extending west from Bluff Point. This means if you land a halibut or any other fish that is not hooked in the mouth in this area, it must be, must be released immediately. During spring and summer, from April 1st to July 15th, there are three saltwater closure areas surrounding stream mouths that are conservation zones and close to all fishing. These three areas are shown here on the map on page 75. Closure 1 is about 1 mile north of the Nanilchik River mouth to ADNG stream markers 2 miles south of the mouth of Deep Creek <clears throat> and 1 mile to offshore. Conservation Zone 1 is open May 23rd to May 25th, May 30th and June 1st, and June 6th to June 8th to fishing from shore. Closure 2 is between the marker 1 mile north of Sturisky Creek mouth to an ADFNG marker located one mile south of the mouth of Strisky Creek, within one mile of shore. Closure 3 is located from ADFNG marker two miles south of the Anchor River mouth to the Anchor River Point Light about one and three quarters miles south of Anchor Point, within one mile of shore. Let's talk about a few different surf, list, surf fishing locations you can try. First, let's talk about Nikiski. There are two places to access the beach in Nikiski. One is off of Salamantoff Road, and the other one is off Hedenburg Drive. This, that is used to access the community park. You'll drive past this park and all the way down to the beach right here. The Kenai North Beach. There are two places to access the beaches near the Kenai River mouth. To access the beach on the north side of the mouth of the Kenai River, Head north on this Kenai Spur Highway in Kenai, then turn left on Spru South Spruce Street, then follow that to the end of the road. 
There is a large parking area with restrooms. During the dip net season, the City of Kenai charges a fee to access this location. Kenai South Beach. To get to the beach on the south side of the Kenai River mouth, turn right onto Kalifornski Beach Road off the Sterling Highway in Soldotna. Continue on K Beach until you get to Cannery Road. Turn right on Cannery Road. There are two places to access the beach off of Cannery Road. The beach can be accessed by turning left onto Dunes Road and following that to the beach, or you can continue on Cannery Road and turn left onto Royal Street, then turn right onto Dragnet Connect. Follow the to the end. There are two bathrooms at this location. This is a fee to, there is a fee to access this site during the Kenai Dip Net Fishery. Kasilov North Beach. To access the North Kasilov Beach, drive south on Kalifornski Beach Road from Kenai for about 20 minutes. Turn right onto Kasilov Beach Stub and follow to the beach. Keep an eye out for brown access signs along Kalifornski Beach Road. Kasilov South Beach. From Soldotna, drive south on the Sterling Highway and turn right onto North Coho Loop. Follow that all the way to the end at the Kenai R Kasilov River State Rec site. You can turn left or right when you get to the beach. Clam Gulch. From Soldotna, drive south on the Sterling Highway to milepost 117.5 and turn right onto Clam Gulch Road. Follow Clam Gulch Road down a steep hill to the beach. A 4x4 vehicle may be required to drive down the hill or get back up. On the bluff before driving down the beach to the beach, there is a state recreation area with campsites, toilets, water, and picnic shelters. The Nilchik. If traveling south on the Sterling Highway, turn right onto Beach Access Road at milepost 135.5 in Anilchik. There are two spots you can access the beach. You can either continue down Beach Access all the way to the beach, or you can stay to the left and follow that down to the beach. Deep Creek. When heading south on the Sterling Highway, turn right onto Deep Creek Way and follow it down to Deep Creek State Recreation Area. Whiskey Gulch. From Soldotna, head south on the Sterling Highway. Turn right onto Whiskey Gulch Spur Road. Follow the gravel road down the hill to the beach. An anchor point. When headed south on the Sterling Highway, turn right onto the old Sterling Highway and Anchor Point. After crossing the bridge over the Anchor River, turn right onto Anchor Point Road and follow that to the end where you'll find the beach. And the Homer Spit. At the southernmost tip of the peninsula, beach fishing is available on the Homer Spit. To reach it, take the Sterling Highway south to Homer, drive through town to the Spit. Fishing access is available on the left near Lands End Resort. So when you're going beach fishing, here's a few items that you may take in additionally to your pole and bait. So you definitely want to take a cooler with some ice to keep your catch cold. Also, whatever food or beverages you may bring with. Chairs, table, a fish mat, fillet knife, some Ziploc bags for your fillets, some garbage bags to keep the beach clean. A shovel and a toe strap just in case you get stuck in the sand. Some rain gear in case the weather changes. Your pole holder and a hammer to put the pole holder in the ground. And then some wood for a fire. There's not always beach wood available. Alright, so when to fish the tide. Often on many of the beach fishing locations along Cook Inlet, fishing is best for two hours on either side of the high tide. So two hours before and two hours after, that's when your highest chance of success is going to be. So to start, you might want to pick up a South Central Alaska tide book. These are available at ADF&G offices, sporting goods stores, fishing stores, and some hardware stores. Tides in South Central Alaska can move very fast. Make sure you understand the tides before driving on the beach. Always carry a toe strap and a shovel just in case you get stuck. So now when to go fishing. Generally between April and October. 
Starting in May through June, the halibut are moving into the inlet, often chasing hooligan and herring, which are coming into the inlet to spawn. And then in July through October, the halibut will remain in the inlet, and they'll be feeding on scraps washing out from the rivers, bait fish that may be remaining. But then after October, they will move out into deeper water once again. So there are many different types of surf rods available. Most of them range from 9 to 15 feet long. The longer the rod does not necessarily mean you can cast further. When halibut fishing off the beach, you will want a medium to heavy action rod to handle the heavy weights. Reels typically are large open bale design with a high line capacity and adjustable drag spool. An adjustable drag and then you'll spool them with 20 to 100 pound mono or braided line, whichever you feel most comfortable with or whatever your reel can handle. So the general tackle you will need for surf fishing includes leaders, hooks, swivels, and weights. Leaders are a fairly stout line that connects the hook and bait to the main line. For hooks, there are many options available, ranging from standard J hooks to circle hooks and treble hooks. Just be sure to use a hook that is appropriately sized for your bait and the fish you're trying to catch. When setting up your rig, squibbles will be an important piece of the rigging that keeps your line from getting twisted and snagged as you're casting or fighting a fish. And finally, you will need to select appropriately sized weights for the depth and tide you will be fishing in. Strong tides mean more weight in order to hold the bait in place. You also need to consider the size of the weight for the rod you're using and the distance that you want to cast. Larger weights can be a bit more difficult to cast. So, a lot of things to take into consideration, but we will show you a basic example of how to set up. So your basic rigging. This is called the fish finder rig. This is your most basic setup for getting started. Weight will be attached to the main line via a barrel swivel or a sliding swivel. The one depicted is using a slider. The hook will be attached to your leader, which is the thicker mono line that you see there. And that will be attached to your main line using a swivel. In the depicted, we're using a snap swivel. This is a linear setup, it's simple, and it's effective. You cast out, everything should stay pretty straightforward. The weight holds everything in place. The line and the hook are up in the current, hopefully attracting fish. So also displayed on here is a diagram with a couple other options for rigging that, that might be worth a shot if you wanna try something a little different. But in the end, Sometimes simple works best. Really, you just want your bait out there and enough weight to keep it in place and then have a good time. Okay, so now what to use for bait. Bait's pretty simple though. So most commonly is herring, octopus, squid, all of which is available at your local sporting goods store. You can also use smelt, which you can obtain through the personal use fishery or buy in some cases. And then the visceral parts of salmon, or these are the leftovers after you've filleted a fish. Any can work at any time of the year. Um, one thing though, know, if you're, if you're going to use smelt, you're probably going to want to salt them first or brine them so that they hold together on the hook. Another piece of equipment that we can add to the list would be some sort of bait twine, something to actually hold your bait to the hook as you're casting. Otherwise, there's a bit of a tendency for bait to separate from the hook as you're casting out. Once you're at the beach, you're going to want to first place your pole holder. You're going to want to place this on the edge of the water. Otherwise, passing vehicles, four-wheelers, or people walking along the beach may get their your fishing line in their face or trip over it. Then you're going to want to set up your pole and your rig and get your leaders all attached and baited up. Then cast out into the water. You're going to want to let 
couple feet out, maybe two to three feet of line, and then cast directly over your head. Once your baits got to the bottom, you're going to let your weight sit there for just a second and walk back up to your pole holder. And then you're going to put your rod, your pole holder, and slowly reel in until your line is tight without pulling your, your weight. You want your rod tip just to be just barely bent a little bit. And then pull up a chair and wait for a bite. After the catch, you're going to want to use a table or a tailgate to play your fish on. I like to then set a fish mat down and then put my fish on top of that. That just keeps your fish from slipping around. And then I always have bags or Ziplocs to put my fillets into. Off of each halibut, you'll get four fillets. Two off of the dark side, two off of the light side. Then you'll also get two cheek pieces. Once you've filleted your fish, you're going to want to keep it on ice in a cooler or in some cold water until you can get it home. Then I like to vacuum seal my fish. It seems to keep longer. Or you can use whatever your favorite way to keep your fish is. Let's keep our beaches nice and clean and pick up after ourselves. So throw your fish carcasses in, back into the water. Keeps things from getting too smelly and dirty. Um, put your trash in dumpsters, or if there are no dumpsters available, take it home. And then please put your fires out. If you'd like to learn more about Pacific Halibut, you can visit the Alaska Department of Fish and Games website, where you'll find many different links. You can also visit the Pacific Halibut Commission's website. They also have a lot of really good information. This concludes our slideshow. If you have any questions, feel free to give any of our area offices a phone call. They all have a lot of great information and great people that are working there waiting for your call. All right, good luck, and we hope to see you out there.